Just a tip, in some motherboards you have two pins but they may not be required. This depends on how much power your CPU drags. Obviously, if you're using an iHand processor such as the i7 quad core processor, you will need to connect all those eight pins. Anyway, if you're not sure, try to connect four pin first. If your PC boots and it's stable, then you can go with four pins. If it doesn't boot or it's unstable, then connect all the eight pins. Well, next I will connect all the fans that are in this case. As you can see, there's a front fan, a back fan, which is the one of the radiator, which is used for cooling the processor thanks to Corsair cooler. And, and then there's also the pump connector which have to be hooked up to uh, to a fence to a fence connector on the motherboard. Fence connectors normally looks like this. You will have a lot of them on your motherboard if you're using nine hand motherboard such as this, or you'll have less such as two or maximum of three if you're using the lower end motherboard. But normally three connectors are perfectly enough. So let's see how to connect them. As first, have a look to the CPU fan connector. You'll find a very small uh, thing onto it. As you can read it, CPU fan, this is a CPU fan four pins connector just upper and rent so let's take CPU's fan connector and hook it up to its connector. Well now it's done. It's linked to the motherboard. place the cable where it's more convenient for you and then let's go ahead. Also the pump requires at least a 3 pin connector as okay so we will use another connector such as this Also in this case, even if you're using a liquid cooling system like this, use the more convenient connector on your motherboard. And also this is done. Well, now let's go to uh, connect the front fan. This is its cable find a connector that is close to the fan and connect also this. Well, and this is done. As next step, I will put in randoms. Okay, this is a motherboard that supports dual channel configuration, so uh, in this case you will have to insert the randoms in sockets that has the same color. Put the RAM in until it closes. And it's done. Okay. Now, let's go ahead. As next step, I will connect my sound card. As you can see, this is a, P this is a PCI Express 1 sound card. Found, find a PCI Express 1 connector on your motherboard and slide in the card 
until it pops in. Okay. Well, once also this step is done, you will need to lock in your sound card using a screw. So take a screwdriver and screw in your sound card. So it won't move when you connect jacks onto it. Okay, now it's locked and it won't move. Well, now let's take this. This is HD audio connector and goes to front panel audio. You will need to connect this on your audio card or on your motherboard that depends where your audio connector is placed. I'll now connect it to my sound card. Okay. And now let's put this on the back. This is an expansion uh, expansion port slot. As you can see, this have a SATA connector for the eSATA and a USB internal connector for the USB ports. Choose the slot that is more convenient for you if you have to use one of those uh, expansion slots and screw in also this thing so it won't move. Okay, screw it in all the way. Well, now it's locked. And now you may ask, where do I connect those connectors? Well, let's begin from the USB. On your motherboard, you will find something like this. This is an internal USB connector. There are nine pins on it. And the same pattern is used here. So you can't get wrong. There's also this small, uh, how can I call it? The no piece of plastic that allows you to insert this only in one way. So take the cable and connect it inside the uh, USB connector inside your case. You'll have probably also one or more of these connectors also for the front ports on your case. You will need to do the same also with this one. Now how many ports you can attach to your motherboard? Well, that depends on how many of those connectors you have. Usually, each one of those connectors supports two USB 2.0 ports. So, normally, uh, you'll be able to use something like four front or back ports, but there are also exceptions. Now, you also have this SATA cable. This is for the back eSATA. Well, to connect it, choose the SATA port that is more convenient to you and attach the SATA cable. This now is gonna be a little bit hard for me to do since I have to go in the back and connect it to my side SATA port. Okay, so as you can see also that cable is connected. 